she's an amazing person and um, beautiful, beautiful work. And so I'm very honored to have her here. And um, I'll let you do your thing. Okay, <laughs> I'll, keep, I'll keep it short. Um, I want to go around the room and talk about a few that have not sold yet. Um, but I also want to talk about how I do this. And I did a little bit of it at my opening reception. I just want to elaborate a little bit more. Um, I have a table set up, a display of some of the items that I use to affect this uh, result. Um, I'll start here. This is my teeny little brush. Mm -hmm. Teeny little brush. Um, I use the finest. Elmer's glue that I can find. It is archival. Um, so, uh, and I use this little bitty dish. Uh, I put water in the dish. It actually had a clock in it at one time. So I put a little bit of water in it and I put my glue on the outside, on the top of it, and then I have to water the glue down to get the right consistency because it's too thick most of the time. So that's a process in itself, learning how to do that. Um, there are some glitters here some that I mix. Uh, I have to mix my glitters because they don't have every color I like. So a lot of, all of these have been mixed to find something I like. Uh, these little bitty things have crystals in them. Some of them are Swarovski, but at some point Swarovski decided that if I didn't buy $5,000 worth of crystals a year, I couldn't deal with them. So, <laughs> And I really don't go through that many. So anyway, but these, the, what I'm using now is so beautiful. And then these are powders. These are shimmery powders, and that's what I paint with. And I will sometimes use my fingertips to get a big broadcast area um, on a surface. And then other times, like in this, this painting, this one, I've got little bitty areas of hand painting all through this uh, gown that she is wearing. So if you get a chance to look at this, this is the headpiece that I use. It's magnifying. And I'm usually about five inches off the surface of what I'm working on. I am right into this thing. Um, I don't think it's my bad vision, but it could be. Um, so I'm going to walk over there. I'm going to start in that corner. I'm just going to come around the room and talk about a little bit about each one of these pieces. Not every single one, but I just want you to understand a few things. Um, Ray Garbo did sell this morning, which I was delighted about, but this is teeny, teeny, teeny rows of glitter. And uh, I have to decide how to get the sparkle on there and how to make it look like it's real. And so sometimes it's glitter, sometimes it's crystal, sometimes it's paint. So uh, this was a lot of a lot of work. Um, these two in red. I was talking with someone earlier about these two girls in red. Um, I love red, and it's it's very stunning. Um, Lily Demita was a French dancer and was very famous on her own, but she married Earl Flynn before anybody had heard of him, and so he became famous, and then. They eventually parted ways, but uh, I love that robe that she's wearing. This woman was in a, she was the queen of the fairies in A Midsummer Night's Dream in 1913 in London. And uh, all of the children who played fairies were painted with gold. And the way I find this out is I Googled a lot. I'm the Google queen. <laughs> and I will find out what went on in this production. And they were all painted gold. And so when I colored her, I decided that this terrible wig <laughs> that she's wearing had to be gold. Her hair is short brown hair, and uh, I, just, I just think it's a, an exquisite portrait of how she's got an attitude. Louise Brooks is, uh, was very famous in her time. She had a bit of an attitude. She was not going to take what producers and directors told her was what should happen in her life. So she wound up moving to um, Europe. Uh, she was just the biggest thing in talkies, and I just love this gown, I love her face and her hair, everything about her. Passing these up, they're so old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do want to talk about uh, Luna Cavalieri. She was an Italian opera star, and so I fell in love with this headdress. They're all black and white when I find them, and I try very hard to keep within uh, uh, public domain, uh, which is 1923. I try very hard to find the older pieces. Sometimes I will go beyond that, and it depends on the photographer who took them. So uh, I loved her headpiece, so I had a lot of fun creating the, the colors and the shapes and the 
the dimension of what's going on. And then this one, I didn't, I didn't want a solid color. I didn't like this black look behind her. So I stole this from um, Alphonse Mucha, which was a, a wonderful graphic artist around 1900. So I found that little design and put it in the back and colored it. And then this little line all the way around her is all little tiny hand painted things. Um, this girl was a very famous model of her time. Her name was Dolores. She's one of the few women, earliest women, who went by one name, Dolores. Cher, Madonna. So she was one of the earliest, and she was just very tall and slender. All of her limbs were long. And she posed for a 1911, 1919 Vogue magazine. She is a bride, and the description in the magazine said, the bride gazes into the crystal ball, wondering about her future. Oh, oh God. So, <laughs> but she was wearing a, a piece only Tiffany could have inspired with diamonds and platinum. So mm -hmm. it's like a bird. It's the shape of a bird. And uh, I had a lot of fun doing that one. I have talked about uh, Louisa Cassati a little bit before. Um, there's just a lot of look on this one. If you want to come up and take a look at her, and look at all the teeny little pearls, a lot of crystals on her, they're all scattered throughout. She um, was quite something from what I read. She was pretty out there. She dyed her hair this color red, and she wore black, heavy black eye liner around her eyes, and did everything to shock, and she wanted to be a work of art. So <laughs> she, um, she's on a pedestal, she is six feet tall anyway, and then she's on this pedestal with this giant hat. So I just, and if you know anything about fashion and fabric, Mario Fortuny took this picture. And it was at her, one of her parties, and he attended her parties, but he designed gowns and himself. So, but he took this picture. And if you look at the black and white, I think it's quite a change from what that was to what I came up with. Okay. Um, so... In this room, I invite you to go in there. I'm not going to go in there and talk about anybody in there, but uh, I'm delighted that five in that room have sold, which just takes my breath away. I'm just so honored. Um, on this wall, we have Vaslav Nijinsky, who was a Russian dancer with the Ballet Russe, uh, early, early, early 1900s. Um, I just fell in love with his story and how he danced. He was very athletic. And you can see in this pose where he is, you can see how strong his legs are, and in this one you can see the muscles, the, the veins in his arms. He was just a powerful, powerful dancer. So he's one of the earliest dancers to achieve the stardom that he did, and unfortunately he was diagnosed schizophrenic in his 30s and never danced again. But the pictures that are available of him, you can see the black and whites, they're just, I, I'm just drawn to his, his beauty. Um, so, so, <laughs> uh, I want to talk about Marion Davies for just a moment. I'm crazy about Marion Davies. I watched so many of her films. She is hilarious. She wanted to be a comedian as much as she could. They tried to put her in drama as much as they could, but she kept, she's just hilarious. And in this particular film, she looks all angelic and beautiful, but she plays a man through most of the film because her cousin is supposed to become the prince of Graustark, this made-up country, and um, she has to take his place when he becomes sick. And she has very short hair in this film, and the, the funny thing she does when she's confronted by being a man, is her face is so funny, they come in and they say, right now, take off your uniform, we, we, it's time for you to go to bed, and our dresser is here, and he's going to help you with your pajamas. And her face is so cute. She's so cute. Everything she does in this movie. And when I found her in this gown, which is in the last very few moments of this film, and it turns to a, I think it's a two-strip two strip color. It's one of the earliest forms of color you can find in a movie. And it turns to color. And I've included one of her funny little expressions. So I just loved how she was seated in this photograph. And I just love this gown that she's wearing. Uh, there's another one of her on the very end. I don't think she wore that in the film, and I couldn't find anywhere where she wore that particular headpiece. She's at the very end down here. It's just loaded with pearls. 
Um, it's just a beautiful portrait of her. Uh, and I enjoyed doing the colors and the pearls on her. Another one I'm very fond of is Martha Graham. She became a very famous dancer and a, a choreographer and a dance instructor in her life. But this is a very, very early Martha Graham. And I really liked her pose. And I was real tickled when I came up with that magenta background. I thought it really popped her out. There's a lot of hand painting. All of the gold that you see is hand painted with different shades. And what I need to tell you is that I have to I mix these glitters and I wind up painting with shades of glitter. So if somebody is wearing something like this air tape piece, he has all these pearls, but the light is coming from this side of him and this side would be shadows, and the pearls come in white, so I have to paint them, go over and paint them in the shadow areas. So that's a challenge, and every single piece that I come up with, that I decide I want to work with, has its own set of challenges, and issues, and problems. Um, I want to show you one more thing. Um, this week, I decided to add two pieces, and so I did. I'm going to put on gloves to handle them. They are not framed. You're welcome to come look, but touch at your own peril. <laughs> uh, before they're framed, they're very fragile. They're extremely fragile. Once they're framed, they're set. Uh, this is Rudolph Valentino. Uh, I couldn't sleep this morning. I got up early and watched part of the film where he's in this costume. And he is a sheikh, and he is the head of the one of his tribe. And he has captured a beautiful young woman. And, you know, you will listen to me. You will obey me. And she's like, I don't obey anybody. And so it's all silent. You know, it's all done with the face and the eyes. But I loved how he is sitting. This is obviously just a promo photo. But he is wearing this. He is using the cigarette holder in the, photo, in the film. And I just enjoyed so much watching it this morning and learning a little bit more about his movements. When, when she does not yield to him, he rushes out of the tent because there's a windstorm. And when he comes back in, she's sobbing. Oh, oh, silent, you know. <laughs> he sees her and he realizes what he has asked her to do. And his face changes. It's just a beautiful movie. <laughs> he, he decides that he better leave her alone. So women loved him because he was such a cool guy. Anyway, this one is for sale if you're interested. Behind him is Norma Shearer. Norma Shearer was a very, very famous actress. Um, this is from a 1930 film called Upstage. And in the film, she wears this gown for maybe three minutes. It's like, what? What? Three minutes. So she comes in, and that's a fan. It's a huge, huge feather fan, which was really popular at that time. Uh, you'll see it in other, other photographs. But she comes in, and I, I watched this movie too. And she's supposed to dance with a partner. The male, male partner's out there just dancing on stage, dancing on stage, and the audience is loving him. She's supposed to come dance with him. She appears at the top of the stairs in this gown, and she's new at this. It's her first time to be on stage. She has this fan, and she's struck by how they love her. So instead of dancing with him, she comes down very slowly walking like this and then she when she comes with the fan and she comes like this with the fan and she swipes him across the face <laughs> that just turns out and then she leaves <laughs> so so anyway the film is called upstage and she realizes that she maybe not the star she thought she was so i invite you to come and look at this um, this is uh, hundreds and hundreds of crystals on this one, uh, I've never done one th with this many crystals on it before, um, but you put them on one at a time, and this one was a lot of swear words, <laughs> because the little bitty bitty ones that are at her back, I get really close with this little thing, this little waxy thing that I use, it's on the table, really close with this little bitty crystal, and they'd fall off into the glue upside down. <laughs> oh, no. So I had to get my tweezers and plunk that one out of there, and then I had to start over. So this one was lots of frustration for me, and I'm so glad that a collector has decided to have her in their home. So um, I also want to say, I always forget to say this, but I do take commissions and consign work, and 
Uh, if you have a photograph of your grandmother, your great grandmother, your mother, and you would like something done, I do that. Please call me. I have some business cards in here. Um, I love restoring old photographs. It's something I enjoy very much doing. Um, and I'm so glad that so many people have enjoyed these pieces and have purchased them and will be taking them home and adding them to their collection. And I will keep making them. Um, so I will ask for just a few questions if anyone has a question. No questions? I have a question. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So what sort of paper do you use? Do you use watercolor paper to do the... Because I, because I print almost all of them myself. I yeah. have a very large Epson printer, and I use Epson paper. It is a velvet, fine art, watercolor paper. Okay. I can watercolor on it. I can glue on it. I can paint. I can do anything I want to it. Um, on the surface, I'm going to put Rudolph back up here for just a second. On the surface of Rudolph, These are silk mats, by the way, you have to be careful with the mats. Um, when I do a large area like this, I use my fingertips. And these are powders, and so I will get the, the powder and amount on my fingers, and then I will work it into the paper as best I can. But this paper is such a heavy matte surface. The inks are black, the blacks are black, black, black. The colors are, are beautiful. And uh, I just I just love this paper, but it's a photo paper. Okay, but you can watercolor and you can do all of that. Yes, there. okay. yes. There's a bit of a texture. Okay, to it. Cool. How do you get the lines so straight? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, because I do them one at a time, and I'm so close to the surface. Um, this little tool right here has wax on the end, and you can pick up a pearl or pick up a thing with it. And then if it's not where you like it, you flip it over and you go, get over there. You shove it back in place. So, I, you know, it's slow. It's a very slow process, and uh, I think it works pretty well. But they're not always in line, but they don't always have to be in line. But in, in this particular one, but in longer shearer, it had to be, I had to be careful with that. Yes, Margie? Um, like, you were talking about the movie for this one. Um, what is the name of that movie, and where do you... <clears throat> See it. The film is called Beverly of Brow Start <coughs> and it is on YouTube. Okay. So if you Google Marion Davies, you can find a lot of her films. But um, Turner Classics, uh, I think it was the month of March, it might have been February, that was their featured artist. And when I discovered that, I went and recorded every film of hers. Uh, they're not all perfect. They're a couple. I thought, you shouldn't have done this, Marion. But, um, you know, she was noted for um, Randolph Hearst. William, yeah. William Randolph Hearst being her lover. And, you know, that's the only reason she became famous. But it's just not true. She was, uh, she produced films. She was an actress. She even directed some. She was just astonishing if you get a chance. Um, I think if you can watch Rudolph Valentino films, you will not be disappointed. They're just remarkable. And you can see why he was just loved by everybody. And also, also on YouTube or Turner Classic. YouTube, yeah, you just YouTube the shake. There he is, and it's just, they're amazing. Yeah. And that one's the shake. The shake, and then uh, this was 1921. And in 19, I think it was 25, he did the son of the shape. So he was his own son. But, uh, but it was another, it, Vilma Banky was his star in this film, and it was just, it's just a beautiful movie. Um, he's just, it was just a beautiful man. The very year after he did this, he was diagnosed with a, uh, a ruptured uh, ulcer, I think on his appendix. And the very next day, it went to sepsis and he died. Mm. He was only 31. So uh, come take a look at it. Don't touch it, but please come look at it. Um, and any more questions? About how long does it take you to do one of these? I'm sure it varies. But... It does vary. Um, I, I've only counted one, and it's behind this gentleman here. It's the Marion, it's the uh, Louise Brooks on the wall. I spent 13 hours on her dress. And I can only work a couple of hours at a time, and I have to stop to, uh, to take a break. And so uh, that dress is supposed to look like little bitty rows of, of sequins. 
but it's little bitty, little bitty tiny dots of glitter. So, and the one on uh, Barbara Stanwyck is the same technique to look like sequins, but they're little bitty specks of glitter. So they, those can take me a long time. None of them go fast, I will say that. <laughs> So, any, anyone else have a question? Yes, ma'am. I was going to mention William Randolph Hearst, but I just wanted to say your frames are all so beautiful. Thank you. How you choose the frames, and do you frame them yourself, or do you uh, go to the, a... The company that I use is called Framed. They're on McCullough, and they're part of... Um, the business they're attached to is called Citrine, and it's right next to Julian Gold. And the woman I work with there is Tiffany, and she's extraordinary. She will recommend things to me, and she'll back up and look. And it's, that's not my strongest point, but she will help me this crazy frame, $760. So you know that these frames could cost a little bit of money, but uh, she will do me a, a very good deed by giving me some special prices if I do several in the silk mat. Thank you. I, I think they do set them off. Oh, I want to say one more thing. If you take one home today, <laughs> put it somewhere where it has light on it. You can see here we have these beautiful uh, spotlights on everything that picks up all of the work that I've done. And it, take it home, redo all the lighting in your house. <laughs> and, um, but they need, they, they really want to have a spotlight on them of some kind, some kind of lamp nearby to bring out the work that these costumes and these gowns, um, when I choose these, I choose them based on a costume or a gown or just a look that they're having. Um, so Do you like those traditional lights that just hang specifically over a painting? Some of those work just fine. I have, I have one or two of those as well. Um, but you know, any anywhere you put it, that's going to pick up light. But if you can get a, a better light on them, that's advised. Anything else? Yes. This just came to my head. <laughs> um, have you ever done any of the Fiesta gowns? I have. Have you? I have. I've done, I've done about four, and I really thought that was going to just take off, and I'd be in south of France. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm surprised because those gowns can be $50,000 and when I told one of the mothers of one of the queens that I would like to do one about this size of the gown and do all of the crystals and jewelry and I, I think I told her $2,500 and she said, oh, no. <laughs> so that told me something. That was not going to be a thing for me. But I'm, I'm happy to do these. These are people who are long gone. Um, some of these are well, well over 100 years old, 130 years old, some of them. And I just, I just enjoy uh, this period. I love the silent films. I, I love researching them and finding out who they were. Well, they, they seem to know elegance. Just that someone, you know, you know, have developed a sense of elegance. There are quite a few I, I turned down that I'm not going to, that I'm not going to work on. Um, but, and I also have to be able to blow them up. So some of these pictures, if they're little and they're not a very good quality, I can't work with them, which is sad sometimes, but uh, I try really hard. Well, I invite you to have some champagne and uh, ask me any questions after this so that you can wander around a little bit. and uh, Take one of my booklets, one of the catalogs that, that are over here. Take one of my business cards. Um, you know, if your great-grandmother speaks to you and says, Give me some glitter. <laughs> Give me a call. Yeah, I, I appreciate it, and thank you all so much for coming. Susan has done my mother and also our grandmother um, as well, and um, the photographs, and they're they're beautiful. So I'm so I'm just so appreciative of all that you do, and just very honored. So um, thank you all for coming, and there's champagne and. Um, Enjoy. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.